I hope that you're not disappointed I'm not a man, but there you go. I hope you're not disappointed, too disappointed that it's not Commissioner Damanaki. Uh, I apologize on her behalf. She really is very sorry she couldn't come here, um, but she sends you all her best wishes. Um, it's a real pleasure for me to be here in Lithuania. It's a real pleasure to be here in Lithuania after the fog, particularly. And it's a great opportunity that we have today, collectively, to discuss the maritime economy in this region. So the highlights of what I'm going to say is that you're doing great, but you can do even better. So let's focus on how the Baltic region can do even better than it's doing today. This is what these two days are about. Let me give you some numbers. So I come at it really from a growth and jobs perspective uh, in the first instance. So what are the numbers? We've got 20% growth for offshore wind energy. We've got 11% growth for the cruise sector. 13% growth for aquaculture. So that's 127,000 jobs created in 2010 in the tourism sector. So these are great numbers. We've got great numbers in the maritime economy in the Baltic region already. But we shouldn't stop there because the prospects, the future prospects are even brighter. But we won't crystallize those prospects unless we do something. We are talking about an eightfold growth in offshore energy between now and 2020. That won't happen unless we are focusing on it and we actually make some collective progress. So we have a huge promise. What do we have to do collectively to get that promise? You've done very well so far, if I can say it from an outsider, because I think cooperation is part of the region's culture. And you've already done a lot of collective work in driving the region's economy forward. And that's notably, of course, in the context of the Baltic Sea strategy. It really is a model strategy. And one of the big underpinning advantages is that in the Baltic regions, almost in cultural terms, sustainability is not just seen as a duty towards the environment, but actually as a means to drive long-term growth. And this is the right approach. This insight, this foundation, this cultural approach is the right approach for the whole of the European Union. So what can we do in the coming years? So for international marine tourism, we have barely scratched the surface. We've started, but there's a long way to go, all of the way to go. Shipping is already the greenest form of transport, but we can make it even greener, even more efficient. Your LNG infrastructure and your smart grid solutions for offshore energy have undoubted pioneering value. People are looking at what you're doing there. But as with tourism, for all of these sectors, these sectors can benefit more from a more strategic, more common goal. This is what Commissioner Hahn has just said. Let's just deviate back a little bit to the environmental underpinnings. We had a really great conference in Copenhagen last month where I really understood how intrinsic is the understanding in the Baltic region uh, between the links of an environment, how well you un understand how important environment is to growth. And this is really absolutely what your special understanding is relative to the other regions. So for the other macro regional strategies, um, the one thing that they should look at is how you are building environment into everything you do. So looking forward for you, you've got the environment bit, what else? So I think there are three ingredients for the right strategy. The first, that the right drivers for the growth for tomorrow can only be about sustainability, you've got that already, but also smart technologies. A really strong focus on innovation. The second aspect is that, this is building on what you're already doing now, challenges can be better tackled collectively. So that means getting all of the actors together. We need to mobilize businesses from all sectors and local authorities from all levels to work on maritime projects that deliver growth and jobs. So it's not just about the conferences, right? We must also involve the education establishment. Because if we're going to create these jobs, 
we must be sure that we are training our young people in terms of tomorrow's qualifications and skills. We need a workforce that is skilled and qualified to apply tomorrow's technologies. So our educational establishment need a good look at their curricula and their courses. And then we can apply our blue growth concept. What is that? This is about focusing. This is about prioritizing. So what I'm suggesting is that we especially focus on those sectors that need a little push to reach their full potential. So in this region, and I'm not going to make a list of 17 now, but much fewer, I think you should concentrate in particular on aquaculture, offshore energy, tourism, and blue technologies, blue biotechnologies. We should focus our attention and our money on those. And the new European Strategic and Investment Funds and Horizon 2020 and other funding possibilities from the European Investment and Nordic Investment Banks are there to help. They're there to help the coastal regions deliver projects in those areas. So Commissioner Hahn has said to you that in terms of the Strategic and Investment Funds, one thing that needs to be done right now is to have one more look at the draft partnership agreements and make sure that there is enough focus in there and that there is enough spirit of cooperation in there. So that needs another look, and it needs another look over the next few weeks. So we, if we are doing a collaborative approach in the Baltic region, that has to be reflected in the draft partnership agreements. So blue growth needs the right framework. It needs a context of certainty and legality for businesses to operate in. So at central level, we're working on that as well. We have flanking initiatives for spatial planning, for marine knowledge, and for maritime surveillance. So the spatial planning aspect, what does that mean? It means that we have to have in mind that, say, for example, locating a wind farm, it may make more sense to locate that across state borders, it might be more efficient, make more environmental sense, than building two wind farms uh, in two separate and more vulnerable spots. It means thinking about shipping lanes. It means thinking about relocating shipping lanes away from protected areas, because we need to reduce the risk of environmental disasters. So issues like this uh, need a better in, uh, legislative framework. And we have put in on the table a framework for maritime spatial planning and integrated coastal management. And we are saying that our countries, not just in the Baltic, but in the entire EU, we need to have planning processes for the use of sea space that are documented and transparent and that businesses can understand what they need to do. So the Baltic states have put a lot of effort into this subject already through Helcom and WhatsApp. So the message there is, let's get that proposal adopted as soon as possible. This is a concrete thing that can be done. Our marine knowledge initiative is now moving from the pilot to the operational phase. And we now have over 100 organizations in Europe who have accepted to open up their data on our seas and coasts. So data that was not widely available before. So that concept is simple. If we have the data, let's put it in the public domain. We're cracking on with that, and we will move forward again as fast as we can. That will reduce costs, and that will reduce uncertainty for business. The other dimension is that we are improving our knowledge of what is going on at sea at any given moment. This is the surveillance aspect. So the vision here is for an integrated maritime surveillance information that will enable member states to better combat crime and pollution, that will save costs, and that will dramatically improve preparedness and rescue capabilities in the case of accident. And this is particularly important in this sea basin, which, as the President said, is one of the busiest in the world. On fisheries, the Baltic is a role model. And there are several fishing stocks that are already exploited at maximum sustainable yield levels. And with our new agreed reform, this will be improved further with the stopping of waste of discarding fish. We are going, we're well on track here in that sector to make further progress to move towards long-term sustainable ecosystem-based approach. So there you only have to implement what's already agreed. That's the good news. 
So blue growth in the Baltic is a success story already, but there's more potential there. So you can link the success stories in the areas of clean shipping to more strategic development of clusters and research communities. So this is to have an explicit focus on innovation. You can combine the political action on sustainability, so your cultural uh, USP, with actions favoring, what can you do next, with actions favoring the competitive development of sectors such as water management and aquaculture. Those are the areas that we need to be moving on now. Laurie, um, don't condemn me, I'm just a messenger, but yeah. could you just produce a takeaway message and yeah. then we could move on, please? Thank yes, you. Yes, surely. You can push for more investment in offshore energy and budding sectors like blue biotech. My takeaway message is that we are there to help you at EU level. The conditions at European level have never been better. We can work with you now on implementing the Baltic Sea strategy and having as effective a component of maritime growth as possible. You have the basis to move forward, but what we have to have as a takeaway message, that this is really about jobs. We need to produce those jobs as soon as possible. We need to get to the implementation phase now. Our citizens, our young people need the jobs. We can do that by focusing. Let's focus on the key things that can produce the biggest growth, the most jobs, in the shortest possible time frame. Thank you.